um, Tage definitely going to come back tonight? Tage will definitely be back. Minnesota and Vancouver have just been so successful on the road. You guys have come off three in a row. You talked yesterday about some of the things you wanted to see, but what makes, when you get some of these experienced teams, what makes them so good and just so confident on the road the way they play? Well, they're, uh, they're stingy with what they give up for sure. You know, I think if you look at Minnesota, they're first or second when it comes to giving up the least amount of, you know, rush chances, odd number chances. Uh, you can start there. Um, you know, if you give up less, you're going to give you're going to give yourself a lot better chance to to win hockey games. And like you've talked about, I mean, you know, look at the numbers. Minnesota isn't taking a lot of penalties. It's yeah, it's another key area. Discipline. Don't take penalties. Um, something again, I'm going to harp on. We, we got to we got to get better. Coach, do you worry about the first game back after a West Coast trip? I do. Um, you know, I, we gave the extra day to try to recover. Um, you know, yesterday's practice didn't look that good. I thought today actually looked better. I mean, normally it would be optional. Today we just made it get out there, get the feet, get the hands going. I try to execute better than yesterday. Jim mentioned his NIM game was his best this year. You referenced it yesterday. Just what was, I mean, he's very, obviously very noticeable. Just what was he doing Friday? Uh, you know, I thought evasive in the offensive zone. Uh, found that next play. Um, you know, I, I thought from the blue line in, his quickness was real evident. He got to the middle of the ice in a couple of good opportunities. He, he made a couple of really good plays from below the goal line where found open people. So, uh, you know, when you look at uh, those areas, I, I think that's where he can be the most successful. Are you encouraged by your depth at center and the way that that's emerged, you know, through the first 20 games of the season? Uh, you know what, you always like to have center, extra the extra centerman. You can always take a center and put him on the wing, but it's hard to take a winger and move him into the middle. So the, the depth is an important thing where – you know, we can take a Lafferty and put him on the wing. We can take Krebs, put him on the wing. We could take McLeod. McLeod has played some on the wing. So we definitely have options when it comes to the number of centermen. And I think when you don't have it, you miss it. That's for sure. Did Bryson just basically make it where you just couldn't take him out? You put him in, and he just seemed to play very, very well. Now, probably had a hiccup the last game. It might have been his first hiccup that he's had. Do you just look at it? Nobody's going to play great all 82 games and just put him back out there? Yeah, I think if you base on his body of play, he's played really well. Uh, defended really well. Uh, broke the puck out really well, which has been important for us. Uh, the last game, I think you've got a fair assessment of w what went on. But really, his first game where... Uh, some of the decisions he made and some of the coverage, you know, wasn't where he's been in the previous games. What's the challenge of Kaprizov going from a really good player to an elite superstar now? Uh, you mean the challenge for us to defend him? Or, uh, it, it just to wear, if you've got awareness, like you can't, you can't even be even with him coming back up ice. He's such a strong player, cutting in off the wing. He, if he gets a step, he's the type of player that even when he doesn't have a step, he can create his own room. I think he's one of the best players of getting inside, going wide, and hanging on to pucks. He's incredibly strong. That combined with, you know, a gifted skater too makes. I, I think he is one of the elite players in the league. That when when you're looking. At defending a player, you're talking a lot about him making players around him a lot better. Is there a way to? I know the penalties are a problem. Is there a way to to get guys to cut back on that other than taking ice time away? Uh, you know, we look at we look at those individual penalties. You deal with the individual players. Some of them inside of a game are ones that if you're defending a scoring chance, a lot of times there's not a lot you can. Sometimes you can do. Um, you know, if you're flipping a puck over the glass, um, we've taken some careless penalties, stick infractions that, you know, we, we've got to get away from. And those are the type of things that we're, we're trying to get out of the bad habit category. 
game streak, you're in the number one penalty kill, and you're doing it without Greenway and Samuelson, who are two of your better penalty killers. Uh, how have you been able to accomplish it without two of your better penalty killers? Uh, you know, again, I think we've got we've got more players that can kill than than you realize that. We've tried to get everybody a role, so some of the power play guys have, have shifted into penalty killing guys too at the same time. Um, you know, I think our our bottom, you know, our, the, the guys that are in the bottom six on the lines have, have been good at killing, and, and when given a bigger opportunity, they've stepped up. Um, but I think it's more that there's guys there that haven't killed a lot that have killed in the past that have been able to fill in and the way we're trying to kill which is a little different than last year it's a little bit simpler um, that it allows more players to to get involved thanks